Hi, this is Shadi from Elite Minds, and I'm recording this video to give you a brief about the project risk management. So who should watch this video if you are an individual working in the project management field, if you are seeking for additional knowledge about the project risk management, or if you are preparing for the PMI RMP certification risk management professional. So this video can be a great introductory for you. So starting with the definition, what is project risk management? It includes all the processes and activities concerned with conducting risk management, starting with planning for risk management, identification of the project risks, analysis for the identified risks, planning responses, and then monitoring the implementation of those responses and monitoring the risks on the project. So all the activities from the moment you start planning for risk management till you close the project risks, all these activities are part of the project risk management. Now, why we are doing project risk management? The objectives are to increase the probability and impact of positive events, which are known as opportunities. We want to increase the probability of having the opportunity on the project, increase its impact. At the same time, we want to reduce or decrease the probability and impact of negative events in the project. So this might be new for you. Risk is not necessarily negative. A risk can be a threat, which is a negative impact on the project, or it can be an opportunity with, which, which have a positive impact on the project. Now, the responsibilities when it comes to project risk management, the project manager has the overall responsibility. But since project risks can affect any project objective like the schedule or the budget or the quality, anyone with an interest in achieving those objectives should play a role in project risk management. So all the stakeholders, all the project team members should share the accountability and responsibility of project risk management. However, at the end, it's the overall responsibility of the project manager. So this is the definition of the project risk management. These are the objectives and these are the key responsibilities. Now, when it comes to terminology used in project risk management, starting with the risk itself, what's a risk? A risk, it's an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs, has a positive or negative effects on a project objective. So we are not sure if this event will occur. It's an uncertain event. It might happen, it might not. But if it occur, it will have a positive or negative impact on one of the project objectives, at least one of the project objectives. Like if this happens, it will delay the project, it will cost us extra budget, it will affect the project quality, and so on. Now, what is uncertainty? When you are uncertain about something on the project, it means you have the lack of knowledge about an event or condition that reduces the confidence in conclusion drawn from the data. We are uncertain about something. It means there is a lack of knowledge about something that reduce the confidence in any conclusion or any information about this event. An opportunity, it's a positive set of events or a risk that if occurred will have positive impact on at least one of the project objectives. So a risk can be an opportunity, which is a positive set of events, or it can be a threat. A threat is a negative condition or a risk that will have a negative effect on project objectives if this threat occurs. So any identified risk in your project can be an opportunity or it can be a threat. The probability of a risk is the likelihood that a risk will occur. It usually it is represented by a percentage. What's the probability? What's the likelihood? Like 70% or 60%? The impact is the effect on the project if the risk occurs. If this risk, this uncertain event occur on the project, what will be the impact? This is the effect on at least one of the project objectives. Think about the probability and the impact like the second name and the sure name of any identified risk. Any identified risk in the project should have a probability and an impact. Now, what is the risk tolerance? The tolerance is the measurable amount of acceptable risk, and it's usually set by the organization for the project manager. What is the measurable amount of an acceptable risk? The risk appetite, it's more high level than the risk tolerance. It's a general high level description of the acceptable range of risk in the project. 
The risk threshold is the specific point at which risk becomes unacceptable. The risk tolerance, the risk appetite, and the risk threshold are three terms that usually set by the organization to the project and the project manager. The most specific one, the detailed one, is the risk threshold. It's a number. Like, for example, the organization cannot accept any risk with an impact with more than 50,000 US dollars loss in the project. This is an example of the risk threshold. The risk register, it's a very important project artifact where all the identified individual project risks are being documented with all relevant details. So if I want to know what are the risks in a specific project, you just need or I just need to ask for the risk register. The risk trigger defined as conditions, symptoms and warning signs of a risk occurrence. Like if this happens, it means that the risk will occur soon. This is a risk trigger. It's an early warning sign that a risk is about to occur. The risk owner is the person responsible for planning an appropriate risk response and for reporting progress on managing the risk. For any identified individual project risk, there should be a risk owner, the person responsible for planning the response, the proper response for this risk and making sure this response will be implemented once the risk occur in addition to reporting on the status of this risk. The risk response, it's an action plan to address overall project risk exposure as well as to treat individual project risks. There is no benefit of identifying the project risks without planning for an action to, to take this action once the risk occur. So the idea of having risk response plans, they are actions we will take to address the individual project risks and the overall project risk. The watch list, it's a term used in project risk management, where we will document all the low priority risks of the project, the risks that does not require any further analysis, they are low priority. A reserve, it's an amount of time and or cost added to the project to account for risks. So. As an outcome of conducting the risk management activities in the project, we will have the specific reserve required in order to deal with the project identified risks. Usually this reserve is in terms of budget or in terms of schedule. Secondary risk, risks that arise as a direct outcome of implementing a risk response. In some specific situations, when you implement a planned risk response, another risk might appear. This risk is known as the secondary risk. Now, what are the key steps you need to follow when you are dealing with project risk management? We usually start with developing a risk management plan. In this step, we will define how we will conduct risk management activities throughout the project. We will develop the overall risk management strategy and methodology and we will make sure that project risk management is integrated into other project management activities. The key outcome of developing the risk management plan is having a risk management plan, including the methodology, strategy, roles and responsibilities, timing, budget, reporting, all information related to risk management activities throughout the project, and the risk management plan will be a subsidiary of the project management plan. Once we have the risk management plan, we will identify the project risks. We will use various techniques to identify individual project risks like brainstorming or SWOT analysis. We will determine the sources of the overall project risk. We will document the risk's key characteristics. At the minimum, you need to determine the probability and impact for each risk. We will be listing potential risk responses and risk owners for the identified risks. As an outcome of this step, we will have two important project artifacts. The first one is the risk register that will be capturing all the individual project risks. And the second is the risk report for the overall project risk. Once we have the risk register with all identified project risks, we will start conducting risk analysis activities. We will assess the priority of identified individual project risks using probability of occurrence and impact at the minimum. As part of the risk analysis activities, we will determine the probability and the impact of each risk in the risk register. We will identify the risk owners and we will document those identified risk owners in the risk register. We will analyze 
the combined effect of identified individual project risks. When I say combined, I mean based on the probability and impact on a numerical basis in order to evaluate the likelihood of success in achieving any of the project objectives. So as an outcome of risk analysis, we will have a list of prioritized project risks and we can have a likelihood of success like what's the probability of finishing the project with a budget of 2 million US dollars? You will answer me like 70% or 75 75. This is an outcome of conducting risk analysis. The outputs of this step will be having an updated risk register and an updated risk report uh, with the subjective and objective analysis results. Subjective as an outcome of the qualitative risk analysis and objective as an outcome of the quantitative risk analysis. After conducting risk analysis, we will plan for the proper risk responses for those identified and analyzed risks. We will identify appropriate ways to address overall project risk and individual project risks. We will allocate resources and insert activities into project documents and the project management plan as needed. We will determine the required reserves for the project. This is very important. As an outcome of conducting all risk management activities, we need to have the reserves required for the project. The outcome of step number four will be having the risk response plans and they will be documented in the risk register and we will have also the project reserves determined. The last step will be implementing responses which we identified in step four. At the same time, we will monitor the risks on the project through implementing agreed upon risk response plans, monitor the implementation of risk response plans, evaluating risk process effectiveness throughout conducting risk audits and risk reviews, and the outcome will be having an updated risk register and risk report with the actual status of risks on the project. This is the project risk management in a nutshell. Visit our blog in order to know more about the risk management at the project level, at the program level, or at the portfolio level.